Thank you. Guru Street and take his blessings before the session. <clears throat> गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षा परम ब्रह्मा तस्म श्री गुरव नम अकमला व्या चराचर तत्पद दर्शित तस्म श्री गुरव नम ध्यानमूल गुरुपद मंत्रमूल गुरुवाक्यं मोक्षमूल गुरुकृपा मोक्षमूल गुरुकृपा थ्री टाइम्स ओम हाव अ डीप इंग्लेशन प्रवर मुनी शंकचक्रासीधारिण सहस्रशिसम स्वेत प्रणमा पतंजलि श्रीमते अनताय नागराजाय नमो नम so today we'll be uh, going through uh, so we'll be going through the uh, overview of sadhana prada so normally this is a 24 hours uh, session so we are trying to uh, make it uh, in uh, between 60 to 90 minutes or on 75 to 90 minutes so we'll try to cover the essence of uh, again the entire sadhana prada by going through the sutra vids so i'll just share the screen is my screen visible yes sir any of you wish to keep the video on you can keep it or if you are comfortable keeping video off you can go ahead please so yesterday we have seen uh, how to remember the four padas <laughs> so uh, whether the samadhi pada is the first stage and sadhana pada is the second stage vibhuti is third and kaivalya is fourth or what is that what is the connection so anyway one of uh, one of the participants asked why sadhana pada second and samadhi pada first we will answer in the last slide uh, for that so uh, considering this as a temple we have uh, two entrances we can enter the temple in two uh, ways one is uh, through samadhi pada other is sadhana pada when you get then uh, you can reach close to the god 
then you can uh, gain powers or all your wishes will be uh, met. So whatever you ask, it will happen. And if you go beyond that, whatever you ask, you go beyond that. If you don't use it for your benefit, and if you go beyond, then uh, something uh, higher will happen. Where it is complete freedom from suffering, you go beyond birth and death, which is Kaivalya Pada. This is just an analogy. <laughs> so that one uh, caution in, in understanding this is, like I, we said yesterday, Samadhi Pada is considered as uh, complete on its own. It starts from what is yoga and it finishes with Nirbija Samadhi. So one of the commentators says, earlier in Yoga Sutra, only Samadhi Pada was there and the other things were later additions. This is one of the commentators. Because we learn Yoga Sutras uh, through all the commentators only. There is no commentary written by uh, Sage Patanjali. So all people are the great commentators whom are has written. So we need to interpret the meaning of Yoga Sutras through the commentaries. So that is his view. He said Sa Samadhi Pada is on its own. In a way, yes, it is right. You see Samadhi Pada, every Samadhi, everything is discussed. So uh, why we have said here Samadhi Pada has one more entrance is, in a way, this gives complete Kaivalyam. But just to an understanding, you can consider Samadhi and Sadhana Pada two entrances. Anyway, whichever Pada you go, you will have to cross Vibhuti Pada. Maybe in Samadhi Pada, before finishing, the last sutra talks about Nirbija Samadhi. Before that itself, a yogi gains a lot of power. So definitely, this Vibhuti details were not mentioned inside Samadhi Pada. But for sure, whatever uh, the experiences mentioned in Vibhuti Pada will happen to the yogi and finally he attains Kaivalyam or Nirbija Samadhi. So this is what the understanding is. For a gross understanding, we can keep this analogy to remember. So Vibhuti Pada, can somebody go directly? It is not possible without crossing Sadhana and Samadhi Pada. But by birth, somebody can get a lot of Vibhutis from childhood onwards. How? Earlier Janmas, they completed Samadhi or sadha, Samadhi Pada, many aspects of Samadhi Pada, or they would have crossed the Sadhana Pada. So this Janma, from childhood onwards, they may get a lot of powers. So again, that's again a little uh, deeper topic. So as of now, we say like there are two entrances, then Vibhuti Pada, then Kaivalya Pada. So we start with Sadhana Pada. So there are two kinds of kids here. Let's see like uh, one is a normal kid, other is a little hyperactive kid. Can we get work done from both of them in the same way? Not possible, right? Because for a hyperactive kid, you need to play with it. You need to take him out, do on, on his way, then he will listen to you. For a, the other kid, it's already a little calm. If you tell something, that kid will obey or follow. So you cannot give the same instruction to both of them. So it applies to the Yoga Sutras also. This Sadhana Pada deals with this kind of little hyper kind of kids. The most of us are like this uh, in this uh, current uh, uh, lifestyle. So how I'm not uh, hyperactive. So we'll say, so hyperactive, not necessarily in terms of body. Now, uh, these are the compulsions of modern day life, right? What happens, what people do in the weekends, when you get Saturday and Sunday, Friday afternoon itself, the mood comes. What for? They think the Saturday and Sunday is the life. They say this is work and that is life. That's what they say. This is work, that is life. So they wait for their life to get into action in the weekends. So what they do? Are they taking rest? They are totally stressed out on weekdays. So will they take rest in the weekend? No. They want to go out. Go for a cinema, go for a mall, or go for any vacation, some short vacation. Somewhere they want to go out. They cannot sit idle. So Sadhana Pada, the first Kriya Yoga. So I am not started, so we should not say that. The techniques in uh, the first uh, tool mentioned in Sadhana Pada deals with people who have uh, these kind of compulsions. So you need to exhaust them or you need to give a tool 
which suits their behavior. Because I am, I want to be active. Physically, I want to go. I cannot sit in a place. So you are, I need some tool. I'm also a human being. I need some tool to get into a spiritual thing. So the first part of the Sadhana Pada deals with this kind of situation. So before getting into it, we'll just uh, roughly go through the flowchart. Now this flowchart, you can see the top. First, I just, uh, yesterday I forgot to mention, whichever color, we have given some shades of color. Uh, the light uh, blue here, then uh, you have orange, you have uh, light uh, green. This belongs to the same category. Now you see the first uh, two sutras, 2.1 and 2.2. So uh, this is like, uh, it talks about Kriya Yoga. So what is Kriya Yoga? What happens if you do Kriya Yoga? Then you can see here, it talks about Kleshas. Kleshas means impurities. That's a simpler word. Kleshas means impurities. There's a lot of impurities in us. That's the reason we are getting uh, born again and again. So Kleshas means impurities. And it talks about a lot of impurities. Then how to silence the impurities? How to not removing? You can see the word removing kleshas is not there. We will see in detail why it is mentioned as silencing kleshas. How to silence? I have some a lot of impurities. How to silence it? Keep it minimal or keep it mute. That is discussed in 10 and 11. If I don't silence the klesha, if I don't address the impurities, it gives some consequences. The consequence or the effect of the kleshas are mentioned in these three sutras. Then it says it ends with dukkham. So next question starts, what is dukkham? How to avoid dukkham? Dukkham is suffering. How to avoid suffering? What is suffering? What are the things causes suffering? It is mentioned here. So he said uh, it is all about the creation. It ends with like creation, drishyam. We should know this uh, technical words. Purusha, drashta are same. It can be called as Atman or which you have inside every one of us. Individual Purusha or individual drashta. Drishyam is all creation. Whatever you see through all the five senses are all drishyam or creation. So you can call Prakriti or Drashyam or creation. These three means the same. So here he says for all the uh, suffering, Drashyam is one of the, or Drashyam is the backbone of all these things. So we discuss what is Drashyam, what is creation, how it exists. Then comes the connection between the creator and creation or Purusha and Prakriti or drashta and drashyam. What is the connection? When these two are together, what is the connection? We discuss here. Then uh, the reason for the connection is avidya. The best uh, term to define avidya is lack of spiritual knowledge or ignorance. So we see the role of avidya, how it causes, what it happens. Then as I say, you need to destroy avidya. Then only you come out. That's what in the violet color it says. The next question will be, what is the tool? How to destroy avidya? It is discussed here, the tools to remove avidya. <laughs> now here it ends with Ashtanga Yoga. From here on, Ashtanga Yoga starts. Yamas, yamas and Niyamas are mentioned as a, in one one sutra. Then if you follow Yamas and Niyamas, what is Yama? Yama is the social ethics. How I should behave outside or mentioned as yamas. How I should behave inside within me. This is niyamas. So that is mentioned here. Then if you for, try to follow yama and niyamas, for example, I want to follow ahimsa or satya, the truth or non-violence. Can I follow one day non-violence? Non-violence, non, not in terms of body, but even in terms of mind. Very difficult, right? Not an easy thing. Not getting anger, not getting into negative emotion. So you encounter a lot of challenges. Now that Patanjali already knows. So he says, 
how to overcome these challenges or obstacles. So he gives immediately after Yamas and Yamas, he has given immediately the solution for overcoming these obstacles in following Yamas and Yamas. Then, okay, you followed. You crossed all the obstacles, you followed. What are the benefits? Now you have here the green color, the benefits of Yamas, and you have other side benefits of Niyamas. Okay, you followed, you understood Yamas and Niyamas, what Patanjali next or what the disciple question? In Ashtanga Yoga, after Yama and Niyama, Asana. So the green color, the three sutras are for asanas, and you have pranayama after that, the five sutras for pranayama, and you have pratyah, pratyahara, the last two sutras. So this pada ends with pratyahara. You can see the whole Patanjali Yoga Sutra of 195 or 196 of all the padas. Only three sutras are there for asana and five for pranayama. So there is no techniques and all is given. It defines like what is asana, how to get into asana, the benefits of asana, something important concepts are discussed. So we will now get into the uh, little detail part. So the sadhana pada provides two solutions or two tools. What are the two tools? One is Kriya Yoga. Next is Ashtanga Yoga. So Kriya Yoga is, uh, Kriya means action. It is yoga for action or yoga through action. Ashtanga Yoga we know, eight limb yoga where up to pratyahara, up to five limbs are discussed here. The 6, 7 and 8 are discussed in next pada, Vibhuti pada. Again, there is a reason why that has gone into Vibhuti pada. Now, there are again uh, two views here. Which is better, Kriya Yoga or Ashtanga Yoga? The question may come. Which should I follow? Kriya Yoga is for which people? Ashtanga Yoga is for which people? Many questions come. Again, we go with the uh, commentators. There is one view is, Kriya Yoga will lead you to Ashtanga Yoga. This is one of the views. If you start doing Kriya Yoga, it can lead to Ashtanga Yoga smoothly. Or people say Kriya Yoga is for people who are little better, uh, having better in controlling their mind. Little mature people, they can follow Kriya Yoga, but others can start from Ashtanga Yoga. But always, the path of Ashtanga Yoga is very well celebrated by every commentator. So uh, there is uh, no clear explanation about which is better, which is not better. If Kriya Yoga is suiting for you, please follow. If Ashtanga Yoga suits for you, we can follow. Anyway, both are the tools. So we go with uh, the first uh, Kriya Yoga, the first Sutra. The first Sutra as usual. What the disciple will ask, what is Kriya Yoga Master? So before the background, we can set like we did for Samadhi Pada. The background here is the sadhaka comes and uh, asks his master. Master, I'm, I'm totally disturbed. I cannot uh, stay in one place or my mind is always agitated. Somewhere like, I don't know, I, I need action. I cannot sit like uh, uh, you want to say, sit and meditate, ask me to meditate. But I cannot do. Please tell me, what is the way out? He says, okay, you are an action-oriented person. Okay, I you follow Kriya Yoga. Then the question is, what is Kriya Yoga, Master? The Master says, Kriya Yoga is, the, the parts of Kriya Yoga are, or the Kriya Yoga consists of Tapas, Swadhyaya, and Ishwar Panira. So this is Kriya Yoga, he says. So, if you follow Tapas, Swadhyaya, Ishwar Panidana, then you end up practicing Kriya Yoga. Again, uh, here you can view this in two aspects. One is, okay, I'm not in spirituality. I'm not interested. Tell me, how should I succeed? I'm doing business or I'm working in an office. Okay, fine. Which are action you do? Can you do your action with Tapas? With Swadhyaya? With Ishwar Panidana? If you are a sports person, if you are a cricketer, you can take cricket as your tapas, right? Like tapas you can do. And 
Swadhyaya will help you to improve your game. It's uh, analyzing yourself, asking questions, finding answer, reflecting, self-reflecting. You reflect on what you do. Suppose you hit a bad shot. What will you do? You reflect on it. Why should I did it? Next time I should not do like this. Have you seen the batsman once they hit it? Suppose they miss the ball, they again do it again. Have you ever thought like why it's again done? Just to keeping in the mind, doing self-reflection. No, I should have done little above or little below or little with force. You do Swadhyaya. Okay, you are uh, playing the game. You lost the game. So what to do? Can I get depressed? Have Ishwar Pranidhama. Surrender your action and the result to God. That doesn't mean be lazy. Okay. When we say the moment surrender or devotion, people think it's laziness. It is not laziness. It is the supreme intelligence. Have you seen like uh, we have studied and we have seen also the devotees are the most happy people because they don't live for themselves. They live for their God or Guru or the higher thing. They devote their life. You become a kind of uh, devotee or your devotion level will increase when you get into Ishwar Pandita. Whom you call as a stable captain? If you are uh, uh, like the game of cricket, who keeps him cool, right? Not losing his temper. Okay, I lost the match. What to do? Let me analyze. Let me do Swadhyaya. Self-reflection, acting, just thinking, analyzing what happened, went wrong. Then next game, do with again tapas. It's like a tapas. That's the only thing I wanted to do. And do with Ishwar Pranidhana. You just put yourself, irrespective of result, I will play. So people ask, if I don't worry about result, how to win the game? Game, the moment you enter the game, you should accept there is a fact anybody can win, anybody can lose. Is that right? If I don't accept the result of a game, can I play a game? You will get more stressed out if you always think about result. Okay. I want to get mangoes. Okay. I am planting a mango sapling. It becomes slowly. It, it's becoming a tree. But fruit will come up, right? Fruit is not going to come down. It is going to come up in the tree. So can I watch the up uh, that uh, tree up and always say like, I want fruit, I want fruit, I want fruit. Will I get? Because that is the result, right? I'm keeping the mango uh, sapling. Uh, it's becoming a mango tree because I want mangoes. Now what you should do? Focus on the process. You look down. You nurture the root. Take care of the plant. The plant will become tree. The tree will uh, bear fruit. And whether you like it or not, the fruit is going to fall on your head. Is that true? So this is what Ishwar Pranidana. Don't always look for the result. You know you're working. The pro when the process is correct, the result will happen. Even the process is right. The result is not in your hands. Tomorrow a flood may come. A cyclone may come. It can uproot the tree. So nothing. There are many, many factors which is not in my hand. But still, I will go and put myself in the process. This is Ishwar Pranayama. Not lazily sitting and thinking God will make it happen. God has given all the faculties to us. It is we who need to make it happen. Is that true? If I sleep, eat and sleep, God will make things happen. They say, no, no, everything God will do. When I am hungry, I, I will have my own plan, right? I should go take. When my stomach is full, I can say everything. No, it's God's plan. You are hungry. That should not be the spirit. We should do our best, accept whatever result, come, result come, comes. This is Ishwar Kalyan. So here, tapas means tuning the body or purification of the body. How to purify? Now again, tapas has many meanings. This is one of the meanings. So by yogic techniques, you can generate a kind of heat or energy where it purifies the body. This is tapas. Swadhyaya is self-reflection. Either you can get the intro, you can introspect your mind, go inwards by doing chanting or by reading scriptures. This is Swadhyaya. Ishwara Panidana is complete devotion. That means your purification of mind. So this is Tapas, Swadhyaya, Ishwara Panidana. So next question is, what is the benefit master? If I follow Kriya Yoga, Tapas, Swadhyaya, Ishwara Panidana, what is the benefit? The master says, your, you can reduce your kleshas, which will help you to lead samadhi. When the kleshas reduces, the impurity comes down 
I can meditate easily. Again, here Samadhi, you can refer the Samadhi of Ashtanga Yoga or some commentators say this Samadhi is the clarity and higher perception. Okay. We move on to the next. Now, what we ended the last thing? The Kleshas, which is the new word, right? So, when we are the Sadaka, what will ask the next question? What are Kleshas, Master? Kleshas, what is that, Master? Now he says, Master says, there are five Kleshas. He mentions there are five Kleshas in 2.3, the third sutra, fourth and fifth sutra he dedicates to Avidya. Then six, seven, eight, nine to other Kleshas, Asmita, Raga, Dvesha, Abhinivesh. Now uh, we know who is the culprit here, right? Who is the culprit? Avidya, is he? He is the Don. All are petty thieves. All others are little Dons. Or like kind of petty thieves, but the main down is avidya. So he is the main impurity. So you please remember, you can remember this tree. Now, the root of the tree is avidya. All other kleshas are like branches. When you want to cut the tree, how will you cut the tree? Can you go and uh, cut the root? Not possible. We need to go cut the branches slowly then cut the trunk, then go deep and pull out the root. So this is very important. So you cannot remove avidya straight away. You need to address all other kleshas. The more you address all other kleshas, then slowly you can come down to avidya, then remove avidya. So how avidya? Avidya means root. So what? If from the root only all the branches comes, right? So, avidya is like the breeding ground. Avidya is the breeding ground where you get uh, flies, mosquitoes, whatnot. All kind of this thing. When you have water stagnant, a sewage water, uh, uh, you have uh, a stagnant in one place, you get all, you attract all these things, it comes. So, avidya is called as breeding ground. And this avidya exists in four states. Like a seed and uh, like a plant and like a fully uh, grown tree. And this tree is sometimes visible, sometimes not visible. This is called the four state. The seed weakened like a plant, hidden. The full tree, sometimes you can see, sometimes you cannot see. Fully active, fully visible tree. How is it? How to understand it? Let's take uh, our ego, that normal ego, ask me God. I know everything. So this every one of us has, I know everything. What I'm doing is right. We always have that ego. That ego can be small. Somebody can have a less ego. That means seed. Somebody can have a little more ego. Somebody, somebody can have like a plant. Somebody have very high ego may not be visible all the time. Whenever you provoke them, the ego comes out. Otherwise, the ego remains invisible. So that is for the hidden. When you provoke them, that ego comes fully active. Is that true? This is one way. Other way is when I when I suppose I get short temper. Okay. When I get short temper, when I am angry, my other bad qualities takes the bad seat, back seat, right? Suppose uh, I have uh, some other klesha. But the moment I am angry. That anger takes the front seat. Other things are back. So the anger is fully active. The other klesha is hidden. This also we can understand. So these are the four level, all the impurities we have in our mind. So what is avidya? So in 2.4, he explains the importance of avidya. In 2.5, he explains what is avidya. Okay. So the avidya is so important. It is a breeding ground. Okay, master, please tell me what is avidya. So, in a, to whatever I learned, the best definition I can say is lack of spiritual knowledge or ignorance. This is this can be called as avidya. What is lack of spiritual knowledge? Not getting terms with the reality, not accepting the reality means existential reality, not the the social reality. So. I see something impermanent as permanent. This is avidya. I see something impure as pure. 
I feel something pain as pleasure. I feel the non-self as self. The body is uh, permanent or impermanent? Impermanent, right? Maybe for few years, at the most 100 years or a little more. But how we behave in life? We behave as if we are going to be here for 1000 years. That's how the ego is there. And uh, every year what we celebrate? The so-called birthday celebration. We celebrate. So if we put the logical mind, in your uh, period of existence, it is one year less. We are one step close to the end of the play. But we celebrate. We think this is permanent, but it is impermanent. This body is impure, right? Is it pure? Today I need to take bath, do a lot of things to keep it not getting spoiled. Clean every day, clean, 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 clean. It is so impure. But we also like this body and every other body. So this impure, I feel it is pure. Similarly, pain, whatever we do, anything in life, can you name any one thing in life which gave you eternal bliss, eternal pleasure all the time? No. Moments of pleasure, moments of happiness, moments of joy, all are moments. It went off. So it gave, it ended up having pain. Actually, it, it ends up with pain, but we enjoy the moments. So the pleasure ends with pain. Similarly, what I am not, I feel I am that. What is non-self? Everything what we see, that is not I am. I am Purusha. I am Atma. That is the self. But this is my car. When somebody gave, put a scratch, I feel the pain. Somebody put a scratch on the car. Who is having the pain? I have the pain. I feel the car is me. I get a pain. I feel my, my kid is me. I feel the pain. So non-self as self. This is uh, this is the famous uh, you know, uh, the four comparison which which explains you what is Abhidya. Now the disciple asks, okay, master, then what is Asmita? What is Raga? What is Dvesha? What is Abhinivesha? He says in sixth sutra, Asmita is the ego or false identity. So what is ego? Ego means what? I am this, I am that, I am a PhD holder, I am a doctor, or I am a, a politician, I am the celebrity, whatever you call I am. We say I am, that I am, that is not I am. The real I is different, but I get identified with what I am not. Suppose I am I'm putting a, putting a, um, uh, role of a beggar, okay? I'm just make up, I want to do a stage show. I just want to perform as a beggar for one hour. Now, after one hour, I still continue that role and behave as if I am a beggar. What do you call? You get wrongly identified. You are not the beggar, okay? I am, I am, I am Bala Murali, but I get identified. I forgot that. I feel I'm the beggar. So this is wrong identification. So I am Atma or I am Purusha, but I get identified with whatever I see, feel, hear with all my senses, what I have, I get identified with that. I think I am that. I think I am this. This is called ego. It is false identity. That's why it says it is the identification of Atman with the lower principle, which is our lower, right? Whatever I think I am, these things are lower compared to the Atman or Purusha inside. So Aspita is, before I am any of this, like I may be a mother, daughter, a sister, wife, or I'm a businessman, father, grandfather, before all that I am me. Who is that me? That's what the, all the sadhana to find who is that me. So I get wrongly identified with all these things. So what is Raga? Raga is the pleasure which leads to attachment. Raga means attachment. Where you will get attached? Whichever I like, I get attached. Is it true? I like gulab jamun. I get attached to it. I like this cinema. I get attached to it. 
wherever you get pleasant experience you enjoy naturally the mind gets attached to it so you are attached to what you like or you are attached to what you enjoy is that true if you don't like something can you get attached not possible so you are attached to what you like what is dvesha dvesha is hatred the pain or unhappiness which is followed by hate how to understand this you take a kid to the hospital okay the first day the kid doesn't go when uh, gone to hospital you are taking me is happily coming okay the doctor is checking after that doctor putting an injection till he takes the injection the kid sees oh is a very good the moment he put the injection he starts crying so he feels the pain suffering when you call next time to hospital what he will do he will cry he will hate the hospital so the pain is followed by hate wherever you are feeling the pain or suffering it is followed by hate because you hate the situation because that gives me pain this is dvesha dvesha is hatred what is abhinivesha abhinivesha is fear or commonly abhinivesha is called as fear of death so is a fear of death with is by everyone no no somebody is learned he is a very learned person he is a scholar he is a philosopher no everyone has fear of death the fear of death exists with every human being not only with every human being it is there with every living creation how is a dog is having fear of death even mosquito has you take a mosquito bat just try to kill a mosquito is it coming and surrendering to, uh, to us yes please kill me or is it unconscious about it the moment you take the bat even before you switch on the button it tries to fly away is that true we are little faster than its movement so i can kill a mosquito so try to uh, no stone a dog the dog will run it will it is trying to save its life it is created by nature the fear of death is there in every living being because that living being has to protect the body it has to survive so abhinivesha is fear of death again like yesterday we said please note down if you have any uh, no, queries we'll surely address at the end of the session so uh, how to avoid these kleshas now we discussed about kleshas here okay all these kleshas we have seen the five these are called impurities the ego is an impurity raga attachment is impurity hatred is impurity the fear is an impurity now next question what the sadhaka asked okay master you explain me all the impurities how to come out of it how to avoid i says you need to you need to address it in their origin when the klesha or impurity is small you need to address it if it becomes bigger still you can address but it's very 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 difficult when something is uh, like a plant or seed i can ask easily from my hand i can throw it out right something i don't want unnecessary plant has come i can pull it out in the seed it's very easy if little plant that is also easy if i have like a tree if my impurities has gone like a tree how to address it very difficult it takes more time more energy and more tools i need to cut a tree so he says you can avoid it but you you first start addressing it in its root where it comes the origin okay how to solve it resolve it i am addressing in the root but what is the tool i have how to address it the master says you need to address through meditation when you do meditation you can address all the kleshas so in fact uh, the way to address kleshas are you need to address from fear to hatred then to attachment then to ego because these four are interconnected how can you see the attachment suppose you are uh, giving suppose you are giving um a scissor to a kid okay or the scissor, the kid has taken a scissor playing with it as a father or mother what will say we just and uh, when the moment we see we will get an heart attack because the kid is playing with the dangerous instrument the kid is so attached it plays with it now you pull it out no no you should not play what the kid will do 
the hatred will come the hate will come no if the kid will fight with the mother no you are not giving me anything it will start hating the hatred will come why the fear of losing that so raga becomes dvesha when the raga doesn't happen when what i want it doesn't happen it twist and become dvesha so they say raga and dvesha are the uh, two sides of the same coin the moment raga becomes like this dvesha you know people in modern day the love becomes hate and somebody uh, uh, two people love each other and uh, the moment you know something happened they start hating how you can how you can hate somebody whom you love that's an attachment so attachment can become hate but love can never become hate so vidya helps to overcome avidya the moment you get vidya the right knowledge you can start addressing from fear to ego it is like what is it you are seeing in the below can someone unmute and tell me what is it you are seeing you change from soldier to master exactly sir so if you take an army you need to address the soldiers first without crossing the soldiers commanders and different different layers can you attack a king not possible so fear hatred attachment ego these are like from soldiers you cross every uh, you know kind of uh, protection they have address 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 finally you address the king or fight with the king so this is the way you need to address the kleshas or the impurities we'll try to put a flow chart like we what we did yesterday now we have what is kriya yoga then we have kleshas here how to resolve the kleshas is mentioned here so next question is okay you said about kleshas how to address it what happens if i don't address if i don't address the klesha or impurity let it be there what happens master if i keep the kleshas that's the next question he says if you don't address the kleshas or if you allow the impurities inside your mind this will give you lot of consequences what are the consequences the first thing is the kleshas will be giving you the trouble in this janma or next janma suppose i killed someone okay i killed someone i escaped from the law of the land will the god will allow me no i will get the consequence my whatever i did will come back this is called as law of karma so can this person sit happy cannot do no no i did last janma yes you just disturbed this first slab last janma this janma it will come and hit you not necess necessarily it will come immediately when you touch a fire what happens a candle is there it's lighted up you touch the flame what happens you get immediately the the result right you burn your fingers that's immediate thing that is the reason we don't touch it if i smoke what happens i may get cancer after 20 years so i am comfortable so nothing happens i do it only today nothing happens nothing will happen but everything will happen at one point of time nothing may happen today it depends on what karma you do so the law of karma clearly says whatever you do the consequence will follow that's what it says the 12th sutra says you will experience the consequence either now or later either this janma or next janma how it will happen master next janma the master says in next janma or future janmas these kleshas produce three things one is the birth span of life and experience that means what what kind of birth you are going to take will you come back in animal form or a human form if human form which kind of family which kind of parents which kind of ambience you will select it? whether you will be born in a rich uh, you know parents or a poor parents poor family and what kind of experience you may uh, be born in a rich family but you may, you may face horrible experiences so these three things the birth span of life and experience these three will happen the kleshas or impurities will decide what to do which part of the country you need to uh, uh, get birth which family which place all those things which pieces this will decide in 13th sutra and the 14th says the key 
that means the birth span of life and experience will be pleasant or painful based on your punya apunya what is apunya papa punya and papa based on punya and papa your experience can be pain or pleasure you know somebody very uh, you know uh, middle class family they live happily life happy life so contented somebody so rich committing suicide because uh, they had 10000 crores uh, worth of uh, you know property they lost 2000 crores they commit suicide right so the experience varies from person to person so the experience is painful or pleasant based on your papa or punya this is about the three sutras talks about the consequence of kleshas if you don't address it this will happen so when you fill it up these are the three here comes consequence of kleshas from 12 to 14 will be the next question what we end up we end up in pleasant or painful the new word again here is painful dukkham so new word so then uh, our uh, disciple will ask okay master what is dukkham that should be the will be the natural next question dukkham can you explain more about it master you said suffering because pleasure why should i bother it's always happy moments blissful and uh, joyful thing let me talk about dukkham what is that master then he says uh, dukkha means the painful experiences but he says for a wise man everything is dukkha for a seeker for a sadhaka there is nothing called uh, no, sukha for everything is dukkha how to understand it suppose you see a kid you the kid and uh, mother went uh, to a market the kid went away somewhere so it cries it search for the mother it cries and search the mother everywhere since as it got uh, lost in the crowd it is unable to find the mother now you get a police officer coming and give you the toys if the police officer give the toys and chocolate the kid will be happy right for a moment yes for few more a few minutes yes few minutes it will get the it get the chocolate it will eat and play with the toy after that what it will ask amma amma it will cry right after some time whatever you give the kid will ask only for the mother like this a sadhaka or a yogi always ask for mukti or moksha whatever you give he is not satisfied he will not use it first because he gets the knowledge moksha is the final thing kaivalya is the final thing so whatever you give that's why for a yogi or a, for a wise man everything is painful but for us chocolate is pleasant toys are pleasant and after we are getting bored about chocolate then we seek for the highest is that true for most of us it's like uh, it is so painful for me to live in a iron prison i am so happy to live in a golden prison that's what we have right that's what we feel our life most of the people the prison is a prison whether it is made of iron or gold what it matters so next thing is the yogi the master says yes this is the pain but you can avoid the future pain what is yet to come in future you can avoid the pain that means what i fell down today i got wound in my leg this wound can i remove i cannot do it i need to cross it i need to experience the pain i need to cross this phase maybe 2 3 days i need to address the pain till my wound gets normal but next time when i go to playing i can keep the, the this memory how why i i fell down how i fell down i can avoid it in future is it true that's what they say you can avoid if you are conscious if you do enough practice you can avoid the pain in future but you cannot avoid which is the pain which is happening now i want to harvest uh, no wheat but i sowed all paddy uh, seeds so what to do when i put paddy i need to reap the paddy but next time next season comes i can convert to wheat or waste whichever it is next crop i can change it but this crop i cannot change because already i sowed it it has come out 
I need to face this one, but next I can always do. That's why uh, people in yoga, the, uh, the no, all great masters will say, you can take destiny in your hands. Maybe this phase already started, you cannot avoid it, but the next phase which is about to happen, there you can take your life in your hands. So what is the, why the pain? Then he says, the pain is due to identification of Purusha with Prakriti. Because I get identified with what I am not. I am not the car, but I think I am the car. No, no, I am not feeling uh, I am the car. Okay. Why then when, when scratch or some accident, minor accident happens, why the pain comes here? Because I feel I am. Suppose somebody else car, something happened. It is very normal for me. Then I will laugh. Why some, somebody scratched like that? Is that right? I'm not, me means I'm not telling us, but most of the people, right? So the pain is due to identification of Purusha with Prakriti. I am Purusha, I am eternal, but I think I am this, I am that, I am that. So this is the problem because if I think I am that, something happens to that, I feel the pain. Is that true? Like this. I am, I am inside the car. Okay, the car is mine. I am inside the car and I am not the car. This is good, right? This Vidya. But what we act? When something happens, we feel the pain. So we feel I am the car, similar to the body. This is my body. I am inside the body. The body belongs to me, but I am not the body. Is that right? If I am body, where I am? I am in the hand. I am in the legs. No. This is my body. No dispute. Whatever belongs to me, I can call it as mine, right? It is mine, it belongs to me, but I cannot call that as me because the real me, what I am is inside. That takes various bodies in different, different births. So wrong identification. I think this, I am the car. I am this body. I am this mind. This is wrong identification. This is the reason for all the suffering. So clarity has to come. These belongs to me, but I am not that. So when we feel that Dukkam, there are three sutras for Dukkam. And this comes after the Kleshas. So next is, uh, problem is what? What? Wrong identification with what? Purusha with Prakriti, right? So problem with Prakriti. I get identified with creation, with Prakriti. So next question is, Prakriti? What is that, Master? Can you please explain about the Prakriti or creation? Says, let me uh, explain you about creation. The creation or prakriti or drashyam exists for the purpose of experience and liberation of purusha. The creation exists for me. Me means what? The purusha. For my experience and for my liberation. How to understand that? For whom the car exists? The car exists for the person who drives it. Is that right? What uh, the person gets, the person enjoys the driving. True, the experience comes. He may experience the scenery outside. He may experience the air conditioner, the music system, the comfortness of the car. Yes, the experience are there. If something, uh, the car gets problem, the bad experience are also there. So experience is for the driver. So what is the second thing? The car takes to the destination. I want to go to New York, Delhi. I am in Mumbai, the car, without car, how to go? So the car helps me to solve my purpose, reaching the destination and I get experience also. This is the same thing for the creation. The whole creation is for me, the Purusha, the Atma inside. I need to experience the creation and after experiencing, I need to come out, get liberated, get Mukti, get Moksha. So these are the two purpose of creation. Then uh, the master says the creation exists in four states. What four states? Vishesha, Avishesha, Linga, Alinga. You didn't, we didn't uh, no need to worry about the uh, words. We will see. First, something unmanifested is there. We'll, we talk about physics. Something, all these things came from 
something unmanifested as manifested, right? Some uh, maybe uh, due to maybe Big Bang theory or whatever theory it is, something was unmanifested, something creation not happened. After that, something happened, creation came down. That unmanifested is called Alinga. After unmanifestation, what will happen? The manifestation will stop. Something manifested, but uh, I can define it. But I can I cannot understand it. Okay, that is called universal intelligence. How to understand universal intelligence? Which is the force helping the earth to revolve around the sun? Who created the force? The same force are there in atoms also. The electrons revolve, rotates around the protons and nucleus. So who created the sun? Which, how, who gave the energy? How all the planets are just hanging, hanging in the space. We don't know which is top, which is bottom, right? Which is top? We are, if we, if we are in the side of the earth, if we say top, it means pointing sideways. No one knows which is the floor top, which is the bottom. No one knows which is right, which is left. The, all the celestial bodies are like just hanging in the space. This is done, done by universal intelligence. After universal intelligence, there are gross things, the Panchabhutas. I can experience, right? I can understand through my senses. So this universal intelligence is called Linga. This objects which I can understand through my senses are called Vishesha. The thing which I cannot understand through my senses are called Avishesha. Can I see atoms? Can I see the coronavirus? Through my level of perception, I cannot see. I need one more instrument. I need some more instruments to see which I need, I cannot do with my normal senses. They are called Avishesha. So you remember in four levels which I cannot perceive, which I can perceive, the bottom. I come from bottom. I cannot perceive, I can perceive something larger, but I can explain, I can define to some extent, something much larger, which is the creation is not happened, unmanifested. These are the four levels the creation is happening. This is beautifully explained in the chart called evolution chart. chart. This is the base of Sankhya philosophy. Okay, if you go through that, this itself will take you know, at least 30 minutes. So essence is right side what we have seen. So if you fill the flow chart, we are filling with two sutras about drashyam or creation. So next is connection. We talked about drashyam. Then what is the connection between drashta and drashyam? That means what? What is the connection between the creation and the creator? What is the connection? So he says, uh, the master says, the Purusha sees through the mind. How is that? I see through my eyes. How come I see through my mind? Okay, we all see through eyes. If I show, show you an apple, if I say, what is that? Can you define in one line? Will all of us say the same answer? Somebody says, Apple, Apple iPhone or iPad. Whatever it is, somebody says, I have, this is red in color. Somebody says this is sweet. Somebody says, I don't like it. If all of us watch a film, if 100 people watch a film, we get 100 reviews, right? Is opinion same? How 100 thing comes from one thing, how 100 views are coming? They say, no, it is my view. See, he said, my taste is different. Now that is what? The object is one, but I see the object through my eyes, my mind. My eyes see the object. Who gives the meaning? My mind gives the meaning. Object may be same, but my understanding is different and your understanding is different. And also the master says, the purpose of Prakriti is only to serve and give experience to Purusha. Now this is again second reiteration. This is a very important concept. So two or three places, Padanjali reiterates again. How to understand further? You see the first photo, there's a world. The entire world is there. There is a mirror. There is Purusha or Atma. Now, where is the eyes? The eyes are in between the mirror and the world. The eyes sees the world. The mind gives the meaning. It goes to Purusha. So how Purusha sees the world? How the Atma sees the world? It sees the world through the mind. Whatever happens in the mind, that is experience goes to Purusha. 
Now that is the first reason what we are doing. We are doing yoga sadhanas. What for yogic sadhanas? To clean the mind. If my mirror is dirty, can I see anything? I, I identify lion as tiger or cat as dog, something because the mirror is not clean. Mirror is so dirt, I see object differently. The first thing is clean the mind, clean the mind, address the mind. All yogic sadhanas are to address the mind. Or one more example, if you see I am wearing a cooler. So I see the world through my glass. If my glass is blue color, the world looks blue to me. If, the, if you have a green glass, I have a blue glass. If we start arguing the color of an apple, who will win? None of us will win. Apple is red, but I have a blue, you have a green color, green glass. So the whole yogic sadhana is to clean the glass, make it transparent. If I have a transparent glass, I can see the apple the way it is, the way the color, the color it is, I can see. So otherwise, the whole, the whole perception goes wrong. This is very important concept. This comes up to Kaivalya So if you can just capture and put it in your mind, this is how the understanding happens to Purusha. Okay, if, the, if I clean the glass, I am seeing everything the way it is. I am getting experience. I am getting moksha. What happens? Then he says, once that experience happens or you understand everything clearly, you evolve, then the scene disappears. That means the world disappears. The creation disappears, but still exists for others. Is that, what is the logic? Something disappeared for me. Something exists for others. We all played with toys, right? At the age of uh, five, six or 10. Now some kids are playing with toys. With the toy exists for you? Is the toy exists for you? No, because it doesn't pull me. Once it was my world, the toys were my world. Now I am indifferent about the toy, toys because it doesn't exist for me. It is there, I know. I'm not telling about physical existence. It doesn't exist in my mind because no attraction to it. Similarly, suppose you want to go to a temple. Let's say a temple is like moksha or mukti. It's a long way. I cannot go by walk. I am going on a horse. Now the person traveling is purusha or atma and the horse is prakriti, the creation. Purusha cannot re-get mukti without creation. He needs the help of creation, right? But the moment Purusha gets the Mukti, what happens to the horse? The horse is there. If Ramana Maharishi attained Mukti, is the world went? No, the world went out for him. The world disappeared for him. But for us, it exists, right? Because we are all individual Purusha. I also need to get Moksha. If the world goes, when one person enlightenment happened, what, will, what I will do? Similarly, the horse will vanish for this person because he will walk and go inside the temple. The horse exists to carry somebody, some other person who wants to come to the temple. So this may be little, little difficult to comprehend, but this is what in one hour we can justify. Just if you do Swadhyaya, little deeper understanding, surely you will catch up the base logic. So uh, the union of Purusha, then we say, if he is getting down the horse, going inside the temple, then what for the horses? Why the union happen? He says, the union of Purusha and Prakriti, the horse and the rider, the union, they are together. This is for the Purusha to discover his own true nature. Why I am with the body? Why the world is there? The Purusha inside me, I need to discover my own self. I need to find myself. See, finding somebody else is easy, right? Because they are outside. Finding me is different because I am inside. I cannot perceive. All my sense organs are outward bounded. Can you focus inside? No, right? There's an ant. If an ant moves in my body, I will know, right? There's an ant moving. So much blood is flowing inside. Are we feeling? Do we feel the blood flow? From head to toe, the flow of blood is there. Why there is no sensation? Because all the sensory organs are outward bound and we experience the world only through sense organs. If you close your eyes, can you see the world? No. So every sense organ or like sensors through that only, I can experience the world. 
so without the sense organ without the world the purusha will not get get experience then why the unity happen because i need to find who i am it's a big uh, you know big uh, thriller or mystery i need to find myself not somebody else so with this we add up uh, four more sutras connection between drashtam and drashya for the next uh, so what in next purusha okay purusha is there prakriti is there i am there world is there what is that joining these two who is who is the paste who is the gum in between you need to find it right because that is the important thing let's say the two paper this is purusha this is prakriti this is uh, the atma this is the world or the body or the mind who is attaching the body it is attached by a glue who is the glue he is the main culprit avidya avidya is the one which attaches the two papers the purusha and prakriti so he says in 24th sutra which unites avidya is a cause of union of purusha and prakriti avidya means what the highest culprit highest uh, klesha impurity as we have klesha impurity we are getting born again and again okay how to come out master you said avidya is the master dawn or highest prakriti highest klesha how to come out destruction of avidya you need to destroy the avidya you need to kill him shoot him then you can come out attain kaivalya man so you need to shoot avidya how to shoot some tool should be there now the tool start what is the tool to shoot avidya what is the purpose of all yogic sadhana earlier what you have seen the purpose is we can say mukti everything but there is only one purpose to remove kleshas if you remove kleshas the vrittis will go will say no padanjali said yoga ya chitta vritti nirodha yes yoga is chitta vritti nirodha but if you have kleshas the vritti will come if the kleshas are not there vrittis will not be there so whatever sadhana we do it is addressing the kleshas or the impurities all the five impurities how to destroy avidya master now we know we we spotted the don where he lives so how to attack him how to destroy avidya can you show me some tools master tools to destroy avidya employ discriminative knowledge not simply discriminative uninterpreted discriminative what is discriminative knowledge discriminative knowledge is that which helps you to understand the difference between two things i can see i have eyes i can understand yes can you find the difference between uh, the two kids in the photo what is the difference can someone say unmute and say they are twins so what is the difference the complexion is different complexion is different if you show to a kid that my kids say the both are same we are little empowered so we say both are same but the complexion is different good who said that complexion is different who found out in you who found out which faculty found out uh, i discriminatory no, I... faculty discriminatory this is buddhi buddhi we call buddhi right buddhi knows which is right which is wrong what is this what is that the buddhi work okay fine we will test our buddhi can you find the difference between these two kids No. no there is no difference so if you employ buddhi in little different angle you can find the difference don't see the face see the shirt there is no physical difference there could be other differences other differences true sir you can see the shirt yeah the design of this shirt is different that shirt is different i am sending two photos but the face is exactly same now you see discriminatory knowledge coming down for us okay and you find the difference between two parts impossible i may need a microscope now with this buddhi i can find but impossible now can you find the difference between these in this two balls between two balls please show me the difference now this is what happened why all these things why should i find the difference because i think something else is purusha 
I am not finding God here. The whole world is making me. You can call Maya, whatever it is. Of course, the concept of Maya is not there in uh, Yoga Sutra. It exists. The world exists. The Atma, the Purush also exists. I need to find the difference between what is this creation and who is a creator, which is very, 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 very tough. Even in the creation, I'm unable to find the difference between two pots or two balls. So difficult, right? So the discriminative knowledge, the highest discriminative knowledge, which is called Viveka Kyati. I don't want to put uh, Sanskrit terms here because it's for people understanding. So uninterrupted, highest discriminative knowledge you will gain, you need to address Avidya. Otherwise, people getting birth and dying without even hearing the word spirituality, right? There are many, many people. So why? Because they are unable to find. They think the world is them. So this is the uninterrupted discriminative knowledge. So how is that? I still, I don't understand. Okay, fine. We'll come to the logic. Okay. Uh, what is the weight of earth? Maybe we don't know. That maybe you put uh, one and put many, many zero, whatever it is. So if as per logic, I should have a weighing scale and put the earth at the weighing scale and find how much weight it is. It is logic, right? Because a weighing scale is used to measure the weight of any object. Is it true? Then why, why, who invented the weighing scale to weigh the earth? We ask this question, people will laugh. Suppose some few hundred years before, when, uh, when, uh, when a scientist say, I can do with numbers, I can calculate something and find the weight of the, this earth, people would have laughed, right? What? For getting the weight, you need to have a machine. But now, by doing mathematical calculation and simulations, we are finding the distance, the weight of every object in the universe. So this discriminative knowledge is beyond logic. So if you try to understand the discriminative knowledge with our logical mind, it's very difficult. This is like just an example to go around and explain things around the discriminative knowledge. So then he proceeds, this discriminative knowledge is of sevenfold. What are the sevenfold? We are not going through in detail, just these are not uh, by uh, hierarchy, but uh, hierarchy by one, two, three, by it may be like here and there. Example is, if, you, if somebody enters this uh, sevenfold supreme knowledge, then all that is known to be known is known for them. Nothing to be known exists. All that has been renounced is renounced. All, no desire, no desire exists in the mind to get things. All that needs to be done is done. That's what the yogi sits, right? They don't need anything to be done. Everything is done. They just sit and meditate. All the sorrows are suffering are overcome. All kinds of fear are overcome. No imaginary knowledge exists. These are the seven stages you need to cross. That means that discriminative knowledge, if it happens, you can cross all these things. So, how the impurities will be removed? Yes, you need to have sustained practice. You know, especially a yogi has to do yoga every day because he is a serious sadhaka and sustained practice only will remove impurities. Then only you will get wisdom. What is that? I need to clean. This is my mind. I need to do everyday practice, use discriminatory knowledge continuously, clean the chimney, clean the chimney, clean the chimney. Then one day I will get a clean chimney. What happens if I get clean chimney? The light inside me, the Atma inside me glows. Then only I can understand. If the chimney is too much of dirt with all thick layer, even the light is bright, it cannot be seen outside. You cannot experience the light. Is that true? I can experience the light only when the chimney is clean. That's what the sustained practice of yoga will happen. Now, the last sutra, he says, that is the eight limb yoga or Ashtanga yoga. He names Ashtanga yoga in the 29th sutra. What is Ashtanga yoga? Ashtanga yoga is starting from Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. Up to Pratyahara or Dharana, you can do things you do. Dhyana, you cannot do. Can you do meditation? You cannot do meditation. Meditation has to happen. It's like, uh, can you pull the flower? I, there is a plant without flower. Can you, can you give me a flower from it? No, no, no. You cannot give. How you will give? You need to water the plant, take care of the plant, 
one day the flower will blossom. So you cannot flower, take a flower from the plant, create a flower, it should happen. You cannot do meditation, meditation has to happen. Similarly, Samadhi will happen. But you can put yourself conscious effort from Yama to Dharana. So this is Ashtanga Yoga. So we fill the chart with this. The, to remove Avidya tools up to 29. 29 Sutra talks about Ashtanga Yoga. Now we are going to get immersed in Ashtanga Yoga. Can you explain? This is a new word, right? Can you explain Ashtanga Yoga Master? He says, the first two, so two steps are important. I will explain you one by one. The first, he says, Yama. Yama means social ethics. That means what? Ahimsa, Satya, Asteya, Brahmacharya, Aparigraha. So these are five Yamas. Why Yama is important? Why not uh, Niyama is important? Niyama is what I need to be inside, right? That should be come first. Why Yama is coming first? So if you think, uh, let's uh, 100 people, we are there, we are going for a vacation. Okay? We are all together, we are going for a vacation. What, what we need for this 100 people has to go smoothly means what? One person should not disturb the other person. Is that true? That's the first thing. I should not disturb the group. I should respect and give equal respect to all others. And I should not act as a disturbance. So how I should behave with the group is very, very important. Because if you want to do yoga, I want to see a cinema. If I put a cinema in front of you, can you focus on yoga? No, you cannot do any asana. So I should respect. So how I should behave outside is very important, irrespective of that society is moving towards spirituality or not. Even for material well-being, you may have your own interest. I may have my own. I should live without disturbing you. These are about your how social ethics, how to behave with the society. Niyama. I'm skipping that sutra. I'll come back again. Niyama is, okay, now society, I know how to behave. How to behave inside me? Now everything is fine. Nobody is disturbing me. I am there. I can do whatever I want because nobody disturbs me. Now I need to look inside and see what I should do, how to keep things inside me. This is Niyama. Now, this Sutra is given in between Yama and Niyama, which is called Mahavratam. That means Yamas are universal without, uh, without any exception. What he says is, these Yamas and Niyamas to be followed, whichever place you go, anywhere, anytime, any circumstances. No, no, I just today, this is a temple pond. Or uh, today is like my guests, uh, guests are come, so I'm just uh, taking non -witch. This is not for me, but I'm just buying non for the guest. No, it is not allowed. You need to follow all Yamas and Yamas, whichever part of world you are, whichever time you belong, whichever be the circumstances, whatever be the circumstances, you need to follow a yogi, a sadhaka needs to follow Yamas and Yamas. One who follow is considered as the highest being. He is called Mahavratan. The process is called Mahavratam, the great, uh, the great book. Okay. So the commentator says, why the sutra comes in between is it's like a light. If I keep a light between two objects, the light falls on both objects, right? So one commentator beautifully says that is the reason Mahavratam. This is come in between Yama and Yamas and Yamas because this should be followed by. Yamas and Niyamas by a yogi. So inside Yama and Niyama, maybe we don't have time to go inside. What are Yamas, Niyamas? I think hope most of you may be knowing. So we will see that if we happen to meet uh, uh, in detail class. Now the next sutra, next what he says, Master, it is not easy to follow Yamas and Niyamas, Master. Because you get obstacle, right? I want to follow Ahimsa 24 hours a day. Can you follow? No, no, I'm not uh, killing anybody, anything. I'm not uh, like, you know, cursing anyone. Okay, you just sit. You get into dep depression mode or you get into negative feeling or any kind of negative frame of mind. You're doing himsa to you. You are so calm and kind outside, but inside I may have many negative emotions. Now himsa to here. So no himsa ultimately. 
ahimsa externally but internally hinsa happens so for every yama and niyama we get lot of obstruction can you follow truth can you talk truth one day very difficult so the uh, the sadhaka comes and says i am following i am getting lot of challenges then the master says don't worry you follow pratipaksha bhavan he says overcome the negative thoughts by positive thoughts now this is the best uh, word we can put in english as positive thought it is not positive okay it is something opposite if something happens to your mind negative do negative to negative something like that and the next sutra he says what are the negative things in what form it will come see i am hitting somebody it's bad right if i ask someone to hit you and i say i am just hitting that is also bad i am hitting is bad i am asking someone to hit you is bad if two people are fighting okay i don't like one person what i will do i will sit and enjoy or oh, two people let it fight that fellow that day he told me na no, something words he used now let him get the beating this is also wrong he says these are all negative thing if any of these thing comes use pratipaksha bhavanam so what is pratipaksha bhavanam now the mat is rolled in one side right you you have rolled the mat now you unroll it what is what is that here is a mat straight not straight right here is curled up i want to remove the curl what we should do can someone unmute and say what i should do to to remove the curl other side you can roll it uh, like opposite side we can this is pratipaksha bhavanam this is pratipaksha bhavanam do the opposite you want to make this make the mat straight do the opposite This is the power of opposite thing. Let's not see positive or negative because that's again we need to go deeper. It is opposite to what pulls you on the negative. Now, what is this? Is it true with all of us? Every one of us is the red person. Okay. Is this all these things pulling us? Maybe the names may be different. Is it true? physically and mentally many many things are pulling us i am struggling to hold the rope very difficult right every day i am struggling many many habits many many patterns or many many samskaras with pratipaksha bhavanam you start working you will be like this your life will be smooth because you know the technique to address it all the things will pull you but you sit you just relaxly you can keep the rope now how to understand it practically it seems to be a little philosophical or theoretical how to do practically okay let's see so you know what is this okay now every one of us know this is bad for health right this is true so what advertisement says advertisement says they are great things you become a hero you can win a game what it contains every soft drink contains sugar then what carbonated drink is right carbon dioxide sugar is bad but carbon dioxide is bad even a lkg kid knows right but what it says what advertisement says is great have it enjoy your life now what the you know it is bad but somebody by advertisement creating a positive on it see something negative they keep something attractive things playing on the screen and making your emotion so sweet towards an object which kills you or which spoils your health is it true so this is pratipaksha bhav they are doing without your permission what is mean by advertisement can you tell me what is the essence of advertisement what is the uh, i don't know from a layman's point of view what advertisement means can someone tell me attracting Adaptation. common people sir is that advertisement that's the consequence of an advertisement promoting their product promoting that product seems to be yes little wider to attract customers sir to attract customers so those things are the aim or consequence see ultimately if you see i praise myself too much i exaggerate myself if i praise you there is a logic right it is worth see because somebody praises the a versus praises b appreciate b then okay there may be some truth if i talks great about me 
if i have 10% good quality if i project it to 100% that is what all advertisement right advertisement means i am praising more about me to you and making it so interesting i am trapping you what they are doing giving a bad thing which spoils your health by pratipaksha bhavana creating very pleasant thing celebrities used to come or they create some clean ambience very beautiful things and they say this is new this is what i am using then we start the mind is they are like uh, taking our mind under their control now is that all the pratipaksha bhavanam uh, bad they are doing there are some good things are there what this is this is doing by government initiative why they are putting this uh, on the cigarette packet by seeing this what everybody is anybody is going to leave the smoking no they will not leave on the first day every time if you have a little willingness see i want to leave smoking but i am addicted to it if you have that feeling at least you have to be straight to yourself see not being straight means what okay one day one cigarette no well, nothing will happen this is you are telling lie to yourself be straight to yourself even one cigarette in a week also bad now if you see the photo start imagining see that person was a very nice person he is very smart now you see how he became this cancer has come you start creating negativity in your mind you create negative to the negative after some time you will gain some more will power to leave it because you are the pattern or the mind mapping will slowly change if you give advertisement the first day are you going and buying the product none of us are going and buying the product on the first day but 3 months 4 months if they give the same ad we say let me go and buy there let me go and buy let's see it happens same thing they have taken this initiative here it will happen it depends on how much we practice so this is a very big topic pratipaksha bhavana this is a more simpler way we can say moving to the next so here the second uh, part of the flow chart we finish uh, yamas and niyamas and pratipaksha bhavana now next is what are the benefits of yama now we have seen yama niyama and we see pratipaksha bhavana how to overcome it if i overcome with my pratipaksha bhavanam all the obstacles now i enjoy the benefit of all yamas and niyamas is that true what are the benefits ahimsa we will we'll say only the main ones one easy benefit ahimsa eliminates enmity now this picture will tell you the herbivorous and carnivorous animal eat in the same pond they drink water in the same pond and their little ones they drink milk uh, from the other ones i think it's a symbol of jainism i believe so this is ahimsa that means what if a yogi follows ahimsa even the herbivorous and carnivorous animal will sit in front of him they will not uh, fight and you know uh, eat each other something like that we radiate that ahimsa outside satya if you follow truth whatever you say will happen that's the power we have seen in old uh, movies right stories when uh, the yogi says you turn to a cat or a tiger or a or a or a you know a stone you become a stone so whatever you say will happen if you follow satya asteya non stealing if you are not interested to steal somebody's property okay something is there you can always take it which nobody will find out still if you don't steal then all precious things will come to you that means what you can only protect it right can i make a thief as a head of a bank he will swindle everything right so the promotion nature will give you promotion if you don't steal all precious things will come and in search of you brahmacharya again brahmacharya has many many meaning the easy meaning is celibacy if you live in brahmacharya you gain immense strength they call us tejas ojas whatever what are be the word the easy way to understand is it is like a grease like a lubricant now if you put enough lubricant in a machine the machine will function very smooth right it goes comes easily the flow will happen the machine parts will move if you don't put a lubrication what happens the machine will fail immediately it gives lot of sound all the parts will fail something like this will develop we will have a kind of lubrication wherever i go the doors will open you know have you seen somebody people go they get click they just walk through whatever decision they take they keep on moving we struggle with one small decision 
that person would take in 10 bigger decisions and everything clicks. We, we, so what we say? This is your luck. This is not luck. This, this to be earned. This is called Ojas. So Brahmacharya will give you that immense strength. Aparigraha, non-greediness. That means what? Non-collecting things. Why all great beings lived so simple life? Maybe one or two dress, a simple place to live, a simple food to eat. They prefer more on the needs than the wants. The basic survival they will take. You see these all these yogis, they just uh, move from one place to another with one single dress. They will not have a second dress. Not bother about what, where my next meal will happen. Will I go get food in the afternoon or in the morning? I don't know. They keep on moving. Now, if you do, if you live in non-greediness, they say non-greediness means not interested in collecting things around me. If you don't collect things, if you do, if you have very less things in your home, can I keep your home very clean? True, right? If I have thousands of things in my home, maintenance is very difficult. I need to spend my whole time every day to clean it and keep it. If I don't collect, keep, live very little, I have a lot of time. Then I have time to understand the self inside me. This is one of the commentary. This is about benefits of Yama. What are the benefits of Niyama? So benefits of Niyama, Shaucha, the external cleanliness. We have two sutra, one for external, other for internal cleanliness, external cleanliness. That means what? I create distaste on the body. How is that? I am cleaning my body. How I will not like my body? If you understand the truth, what is that you will be cleaning every day? Something impure only you will be cleaning every day, right? If something is so pure, why you should clean every day? But this body is so impure, you have to clean every day. If you understand this truth, you will have some dislike about this body. Then you will have dislike about any other body. Sattva Shuddhi. It is purity of mind. If you have purity of mind, then pleasantness will come. Pleasantness will be followed by focus. If you are pleasant, you can focus, right? If you are disturbed, you cannot focus. If you are pleasant, you can focus. When you focus, you can control your senses. Gain mastery over it. When you control your senses, you can realize the Atma or Purusha. This comes from Sattva Shuddhi. Santosha. Santosha means contentment. But contentment means what? I am happy with what I am. But people see this is a negative quality. Don't get satisfied. Keep moving. Keep moving. See, we need to understand two things here. People going towards ambition or career or whichever it is, it is seeking the happiness. Is that true? And I see what I don't have. I go and seek happiness. I seek happiness. When you go seeking happiness, you cannot live joyfully. Is it true? I am unhappy, so I am searching happy. Now, when you are unhappy, you can go like this, like this person walks. But when I see what I have, you are happy with what I have. You have so much gratitude. You are so grateful to God, like whatever you got it. Maybe you got one hand chopped off in an accident. Be grateful you have other end. If you have that kind of mindset, then life will become the expression of your joy. See, if you are seeking joy, how will you be? If you express your joy, how will you be? Huge difference, right? When you have contentment, you have expression, your, your life will happen as an expression of your joy and happiness. Now, how can I get it? How, how I will enter this state? Please find the meaning of moksha, especially swadharma. They are connected. Please go and find it, sir. It's a very interesting concept. Why is Swadharma? What is Swadharma? Why is Swadharma? It's a very important concept. Please uh, Google it. We don't have time to do that. Now, next is Tapas. Here, Tapas is getting your body and mind to your control. Your body can withstand the extremities. If you do asana, what happens? Your body becomes so strong, you can live in cold or in summer or winter, you can withstand. Similarly, your mind. Happiness or sorrow, you can withstand. So by tapas, you can gain the power or the control of your body, senses, to some extent mind also. Swadhyaya. Swadhyaya means self-reflection. Always Swadhyaya means reading scriptures or any moksha sastra. One commentator beautifully says, 
reading or understanding any moksha shastra is considered as swadhyaya. You read Ramayana, everybody knows Ramayana story. Why people ask you to read Ramayana? You should have thought of, right? I think many people know. The story is same, but when Rama underwent so much problem, such a king, such a high evolved person, then I should not complain about my problem, right? I should learn from his life. This is what I I don't need to say anything. It is complete surrender. We have seen that earlier. So when you have come, when you do Ishwar Panidana, then the Samadhi will happen. It's easy. Of course, Swadhyaya. If you do Swadhyaya, your Ishta Devata will come and help you. If I do so self-study, self-reflection, whom are your Ishta Devata will come and help you in removing your obstruction. You get one more help from nature. That is the benefit of Swadhyaya. So with this, we finish the benefits of Yamas and Niyamas. Then our famous uh, Sutra starts. Three sutras for asana. The first sutra about define, uh, definition. Def definition of asana, then how to do asana, benefits of asana. What is definition? Everybody, everybody knows. Thiram Sukham. But what is Thiram? What is Sukham? Can you find Thiram and Sukham here? In this uh, little girl? Many times, what we do in competition, many of us are there in uh, yoga competition. We tell them, you should smile in the final pose. That is not Sukham. You should not smile, compel you to smile. You should be so much ease that you enjoy the posture. This is Sukham and Stiram. If you're doing the posture with so much difficulty and finally you want to uh, get good marks in the uh, uh, competition, Finally, you smile. That is not Thiram and Sukham. But most of the yoga teachers, we teach them. Final course, please smile. But that is not the way. He says, whichever you do with so much comfort and so much ease, with stability, no, no shaking of body, no trembling of hand, no trembling of legs, this is asana. If you tremble, you try to control it with too much effort, that is not asana. How to do the asana? Ready, you, you have to have persevering effort. Effort. Long time effort you need to put. You need to loosen the resistance. What is that resistance? Now, in this girl, she's doing, she's resisting the weight of the body through her hands, right? Now, or the legs, legs trying to uh, come down. She's resisting that with uh, some effort. That resisting effort, your resisting effort will come down. That means what? You do the asana with ease. If you do that, you will open unlimited possibilities. This is how we need to do asana. So we always, uh, one of the commentator beautifully explains about the Adi Shesha. So who, you can see the earth, it is, it is the universe. He is having universe in his head and he is acting as a uh, cushion or a bed to the Lord and uh, they say like, Lord, with so much weight and head, the so much universe still, Adi Sesha. Uh, so he handles with ease. You can see him, there is no stress. So this is how the asana should be. So that's why they always, uh, many competitors used to point out uh, uh, this example. Okay, I do what happens. Benefit of asana, you will come out of dualities. What are the dualities? The extremities. The pain and pleasure, hot and cold, whatever you say, because your body becomes more capable, to some extent, mind also will become, you can handle the extremities. You can come out of dualities in certain planes of your place of the body. Now, what is pranayama, master? Because asana is over. Then definition of pranayama. You can say he defines pranayama. He says pranayama is Inhalation, exhalation, and hold. This is pranayama, right? There's nothing, there are only three. Maybe hold, you have two hold. You can inhale and hold. You can exhale and hold. But in basically, you have inhalation, exhalation, hold. How to do pranayama? You have to do pranayama based on the time, place, and duration. How much pranayama to take? Which time I'm doing? Which place? Am I in a hill station? I'm in a normal place. Accordingly, you need to do. Why it is connected? Because we have not, all of us, we have not come here with the ears. 
as our lifetime, 50 years, 60 years, 100 years. No, we have come with certain amount of breaths. So much amount of breath has been given. Maybe thousands and thousands of breath. Some amount of breath, the quantity of breath is given. So much numbers of breath. If you reduce your breath, if you have deep inhalation, exhalation, now how much is the number of breaths? Around 14 to 15 breath per minute we are taking. If you reduce the number of breath, your lifetime will increase. You can see here, the mouse breath is 120 breath per minute. The lifetime is three years. A turtle breath is four breath a minute. It lives for 250 years. So that's why it can extend your life. The pranayama will extend your life. And what is the quality? How to do pranayama? There, the quality of pranayama is also mentioned. How the pranayama should be? It should be dirga and sukshma. The pranayama should be long and subtle, not breathing fast like shallow breathing, right? That's the quality mentioned in 50th Sutra. Now, next two Sutra talks about the benefit. Benefits of pranayama. When you do pranayama, benefit, the first uh, benefit is, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, the, uh, sorry, the fourth aspect is there, 51. That means called Chaturtaha or Kevala Kumbhaka. That's the state. That is a state where you don't know whether you are breathing in or not. If you master your pranayama, every day you are doing pranayama, maybe this janma or next janma, any janma, a state will come, you will go beyond inhalation and exhalation. That means you don't know whether breathing or not. That state you will happen. That is called Kevala Kumbhaka or Chaturtaha. Benefit? If I do pranayama, my impurities will be removed. I can see the sun, the clouds are removed. My avidya will come down. I can see vidya. Other benefit, I will become, I will qualify to do dharana. You see how very difficult, how difficult it is to do meditation because you need to qualify for it. In the first sutra, I would have seen somebody who qualifies for asana can only enter into pranayama. That's the first uh, thing we missed it. Like it, like this, one, one, a person who qualifies for, for pranayama can only eligible to do dharana. So we fit that pranayama and final two sutras about pratyahara. So what is pratyahara? The famous example is tortoise. When any danger comes, what the tortoise do? It withdraw its limbs. So we need to withdraw our senses. Withdraw means not closing. You just withdraw and try to focus, use that energy to go inside. Withdrawing my all the five senses slowly and using that energy to travel inside and find something more fantastic. That is Pratyahara. If I do Pratyahara, what will happen? It results in absolute control. I can mastery over my senses. Now these horses are the senses. If every horse goes in every direction, can I go in the direction where I want to go? No. So Krishna, Lord Krishna is a buddhi who uh, no, guides the hearts. The buddhi has to guide the uh, senses. And Arjuna is a soul. The, uh, the soul can travel only the senses goes in right direction and buddhi functions well. So the mastery of senses we will get in Pratyahara. So with this uh, finish, maybe I'm not uh, sure it's too much uh, today. So now it's uh, time for you. If you have any doubts, please ask me. Wonderful session, Ji. Thank you. Any questions? Sir, awesome session, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Pranam, sir. Namaste. Pranam, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, I have one question. Uh, please, sir. What is... Uh, a he and han. What is? He, he, he and hanam. Then a he, 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 yes, yes. Take a little more time. So can you call me? I can say uh, that's a, uh, this called Chatur Bihwa. There's a concept in Ayurveda followed. Okay, I'll try to explain shortly. He, am, he, tu, hanam, upayam. We need to say two, four things. He, am, he, tu, hanam, upayam. That means what? On a simple thing, how a doctor analyzes a person, a patient goes. A doctor first see the patient and check his condition, okay? Uh, then diagnosis him. He diagnoses what is that. He finds a disease. Then after that, what he does it, he will know what medicine to give, okay? He will identify the disease, then he will say, choose this medicine. 
then he will write the medicine and or, or give the medicine to take the patient this is the way a doctor or ayurveda like or any doctor will follow now heyam hetu hanam upayam is like that when suffering comes you need to say from where suffering comes what is the cause of suffering you find out what is the cause of suffering how to remove suffering again all comes to avidya avidya is the cause of suffering i need to remove avidya how to remove avidya that is upayam so heyam hetu hanam upayam is tools so this is little it takes time sir this is briefly the please call me uh, any time so we'll discuss thank you I, thank I you slides for it in okay. a detail session we have slides for everything it's a it's a 400 and odd slide i am trying to put in that slide in 30 slides and a 25 four hour session in one and a half hour session so i'm very sorry like you know to do that but please call me any time we are free thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir excellent uh, yes ma'am yes ma'am hello sir uh, uh does all the purushas like everybody has an individual purusha uh, so all the purusha has the desire to uh, like uh, um, uh, discover their true self like i have seen people who were not at all bothered about anything they just live in the world and uh, enjoy the world and go so uh, they they too have purusha so uh, uh, my question is like all purushas have that desire of liberating itself so what are you doing ma'am hello ah uh, what are you doing ma'am can you tell me what you are doing what's your profession or work uh right now i'm not uh, i'm at home only uh otherwise i was practicing before as a medical so, professional when, when you are doing school what are what are your ambition you are going to be in studies right yes you study the subject when you are into college what do you do yeah uh, professional studies and whatever uh, like yeah you want to settle in life or you might have ambition that would have come to the college and you would have proceeded on that way that ambition or uh, whatever about life you are not aware in school so all the school is getting 100 marks or getting the maximum marks is it right yes but the effort is same the school the uh, ignorance is more the perception is less i go behind what i know the best when i went to the college i know little more i went behind that after college what we do we are joining a company and getting promotion promotion work hard work hard work hard earn money earn money i know only money i go behind it full my effort everybody wants to reach unlimited but the means through the means what i know if you want to reach something unlimited that means what you want to get into spirituality you want to go to the moon one of the masters used to say somebody wants to go to the moon and somebody says in the motivation book now whip the horse beat the horse strongly the horse will run and catch the moon the horse can climb the mountain it cannot go to the moon right similarly those who go behind money they are not aware about this they go behind money at one point will come they are very bored about all those things they will start searching spirituality at the age of 60 70 80 90 we don't know everybody everybody wants to cross their limit and do something or the highest thing but the method or direction is wrong for a spiritual person the direction is right i know everybody everybody see there is a saying like everybody will attain moksha you know that even if you don't practice you will attain moksha but how many thousands of years later we don't a spiritual sadhaka prepones that he wants to do it very fast that's the difference otherwise if everybody has the right clarity understanding of life people will use the money to whatever extent that is important they will not uh, take the money uh, to to enter to all all uh, branches of life similarly knowledge no difference between gathering money and gathering knowledge right he gathered money i gathered knowledge what's the difference both are assets so that doesn't mean anything but uh, people guy who uh, sadhak who has a clarity he limit that he knows where to put a full stop thank you sir then uh, when would be the next session sir uh, how will we know that uh, there is no next session ma'am uh, we want to give a taste of uh, you know yoga sutra because our swami ji says like you know spread the word of yoga so a uh, very difficult subject uh, you know people don't uh, try to give uh, the way Uh, a normal person can understand so this is what we have taken we will definitely inform you we will take your number already you have filled the google form we will let you know the future thing but 
we are coming up with a detail session it's a six months course five to six months course every saturday sunday it's more than 60 hours uh, we say uh, we are starting from 21st january saturday and sunday 8 to 9:30 uh, every sutra will be dealt in detail we will give all the relevant uh, materials so any of you interested i'll put uh, things in the group if you are interested you can take part because it takes a long time to learn we cannot finish yoga sutra in one month time you need five to six months to dwell go deeper understand so we inject slowly if we inject fully i can we can finish our job so it sure. is not for money it is not to say we have done our swami ji's noble intention is to put the seed in everyone so that the seed will grow so that's what uh, we are a part of it yes sir sir uh, can we have the ppt uh, ppt we cannot give ma'am because that's <laughs> i can oh. the recording is there the recording is there it is available you just take you start pondering it is always there the youtube so you can please take i said one thing uh, unluckily i missed the class yesterday by uh, my friend's reference i joined the class today i didn't uh, fill the google uh, form so please message me i'll go? take your number i'll store your number please message me so, yeah in the group in the chat itself sir no no not uh, here ma'am in my whatsapp you can message or put in the group your name like that put some reference i'll store your number Yeah, sure, sir. I'll give me details. So this is only about Patanjali Yoga Sutra or Upanishads and other Vedas and everything like uh, will be taught in the next. Uh, I'm only uh, I'm, I'm only for, I'm only fortunate for past few years so I started learning one by one. So if time permits, we will also go through that and do it. As of now, yes. Only uh, we know one line about Yoga Sutra to teach. Uh, no, not teach to. We understood one line. Just we are sharing. Of course, any program comes, we'll let you know. As of now, there is uh, no other philosophy or other Upanishad class. In fact, we are interested. So, God willing, if something has to happen, let it happen. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, very, very wonderfully explained, sir. Uh, can I know how long it taken for you to? They started from two thousand eighteen. Uh, my classmates are here. we studied uh, no so we started in 2018 so that uh, inspired you know, i was inspired the moment uh, yoga sutra came then i took uh, i i understood the basics then uh, few years back uh, two years back uh, i was spending eight months every day five to six hours continuously eight months so then uh, I, uh, now i know what i don't know so it takes lot of time but somebody teaches helps is good but unfortunately yoga sutra is not the subject taken by all even for teachers i i'm not i don't know why it has not been taken maybe due to i don't comment on it so it's very uh, difficult subject but if it if we present it well everybody can understand we can inspire people to learn more and spread our culture that we can it takes a lot of time man if you even join the course i'll i'll assure you in 6 months you will get the essence but again it's left to you it take another 6 months to dwell on the concept relate to the world relate to your life and that will be learning every day when you get the essence now it's left to you everything you can relate that will help can you resend the google form sir i that's we close ma'am you want to give your number please uh, message me ma'am of course i need to i will note it down please say please note down my number that you put it so that i in the group remember. in the group itself in the group you put it in the group you put it i will take it down Fine. I'll inform you. Any course coming from our shop, definitely we'll note your number, send you the thing. And uh, most of the things I feel it is uh, it relates to the Bhagavatam also. Oh, fine. Okay. All fellows of the truth are saying yes, ma'am. There uh, is one question for you. How uh, one, one you try? Rajesh Lakshmi, ma'am, you put the number here. I may not note it. Please WhatsApp me. Yes, yes, please, ma'am. Uh, one question for you. Uh, they are asking how your life has changed after any tra- how your transformation. they are asking about your transformation sir no, no, in the nothing. chat box in the chat box sir. No, nothing Please nothing changed not, nothing changed man like we are all seekers we know how how dirty i am only i am knows right everybody knows so nothing to what we are all seekers like trying to find some way in life to get something at least before end of the but we want to do something so i am also one of the seekers sir. Uh, sir i i do not have your number can you Can It is in the group, ma'am. So you are not in the group. Can you please note on nine eight four zero three? Yeah, thank you. Nine eight four zero three. Nine four zero nine three. Ah, the main thing is it is ah nine four zero nine three. Correct, ma'am. Please, please. Yes, yes, tell me. Yeah, the main thing is uh, when we see this uh, this uh, 
yoga sutra means it's something which is a very difficult like a, uh, this thing no but when you explain uh, it's very easy and it's very interesting to follow also so that we can yeah, that uh, actually it, uh, it in it, it it is increasing the interest to learn more about it rather than reading the book the way in which you explained and the flow chart and all no it is giving a very good uh, uh, i mean we are able to understand uh, very easily in the normal life we can do that right otherwise in the so much of technical terms inside that which is a uh, very I, difficult uh, consciously i spent 6 uh, to 8 hours yesterday and today to make it more non technical that's a difficult job Excellent. but i was making sure because it, i would see it's not like uh, to show what we know it is purpose is to, to make, make uh, people who come here they should understand maybe some would have got bored also i'm not sure who knows yoga sutra but the purpose of this session is to inspire not to uh, put everything what we know that's what that the word that yeah. inspire is the is the apt word which is uh, which is the outcome of this class thank you so much sir thank you lot hari om sir and ma'am uh, sir helps in chanting also he helps in reciting the shlokas as well he helps uh, to get the meaning word by word he is so good in explaining these yoga sutras na i have done this course with sir and uh, i always feel privileged to join the class again see. and again happy to see some of you here na in case one event happy sir Thanks what is the fee details of the course fee details of the course uh, can you message me ma'am i'll send you sure 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 thank you sir so the uh, course also you explaining no you will be you will be taking the classes i'll be taking the class yoga sutra okay. i take ah okay thank you thank you so thank so you so much sir so please uh, yeah please yeah they were it was beautiful sir thank you on again sir thank you sir bye sir so somebody i think uh, just want to say something i just yeah know. i just wanted to add uh, hari om sir uh, hari so prashant here so i, I have been following uh, shivdarshan yoga with the lf for last one and a half years at least but uh, unfortunately i was not able to enroll myself for any full time course but i would strongly recommend shivdarshan yoga vidyalaya for any courses that is being floated by them because i i have attended all your webinars that you had conducted last year and uh, even before uh, uh, attending the webinars when i just visited your website the few information that is available that inspired me a lot uh, and i have heard about your practical classes offline classes also from some of my fellow uh friends who are from yoga community because i have, i have just i just completed my msc yoga from a, a tnps university and uh, we have been hearing lot about you so i'm i'm just looking forward to keenly to a offline class actually yeah that's what i can say uh, but i will also try to enroll for a online class soon i i just got some commitments but uh, for all of those who are asking about the quality of the course and all those things i can become a big, uh, bona fide ambassador for that so the that's course. the quality of all the things before doing the course that is offered before doing the course so actually sir our name spread through word of mouth now past two three uh, years we are putting in whatsapp otherwise it's people who came and studied here they spread word of mouth all like created by swami ji our swami ji single handedly it's all volunteer nobody else is there we have two swami ji mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. i am volunteering there we have one person recently appointed for you uh, know taking care of administration otherwise it's all by volunteers the teachers are the great teachers are there who are there for long time i just joined just few years back but there are great teachers who are there earlier all trained you uh, know blessed by swami ji so by uh, swami ji's grace things are good very very nice to you so so any idea regarding the offline classes actually so you're yeah, planning okay, sir, for we are we are ready to conduct but again if we have a batch of 25 people joining in therapy we used to get uh, do teacher training course in yoga therapy 25 people mm-hmm. comes for mm-hmm. uh, online class one people one person asks for offline now how to uh, mobilize uh, the resources uh, no okay person, i completely understand okay if we get a batch of 10 people please say like we are ready to conduct any course 10 batch 10 people minimum 10 people. okay Okay. okay thank you hari om and it's in only chennai sir yeah our ashram is in chennai okay okay not in outstations you don't conduct we have an ashram at tirunamalai we have an ashram at uh, kashi kashi chennai is what we do all that okay sir thank you sir thank you sir
हरि ओम सर थैंक यू सर हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि ओम सर थैंक यू सर हरि ओम सर थैंक यू वेरी मच हरि ओम सर थैंक यू सो 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 मच हरि ओम सर थैंक यू वेरी मच Also, we'll take leave. We'll again, meet the health and wellness. Thank you so much, sir.